Okay, I'm going to take Ben off of mute really quick so you can just tell me if you can see my screen. Oh, yeah, right now I see the screen of all the people sitting around the table. Perfect. Thank you, Ben. Okay, so, like I said, welcome to Academic U, our second session, which is going beyond study tables. Um, I want to give a gracious thank you to Melissa and John Gargani. Um, John Gargani is an alumnus from the Pitt chapter. Um, they gave a gracious donation to the Triangle Education Foundation, which is supporting this program. Um, Academic U last year was offered at our regional leadership conferences and then as requested by our chapters and colonies to be given to them on site, which we are still more than happy to do should your chapter or colony want us to come and give a, a specific version of this to your membership. Um, but we decided that we wanted to make this more available to all of our members, which is why we're offering it as an e-learning session for this year. Um, for those of you who weren't in attendance last week, last week we really talked about how to utilize um, academics in your recruitment process so that we're not only recruiting men that are already committed to academics and scholarship, but that we have standards in place so that you know we can support them throughout the recruitment and new member process. So that's really what we talked about last week. This week we're going to focus specifically on creating um, a holistic and all-encompassing academic program that really goes beyond the laziness of just requiring your members to participate in study tables or study hours. Next week is our third session and we will be talking about creating a standards program in place. So I refer to it as an academic improvement plan and that's when you have members that maybe fall below your standards and put them into a tier system to give them individualized support and incentives um, and things like that. So next week we really get into the weeds about how to create that improvement program. And then our fourth and final week talks about membership development programs that focus around academics and career development. So it's more of just an idea sharing session that we will have. So to get started, um, and you'll see that some of these slides are more interactive because, like I said, we did used to offer this at our regional leadership conferences and on site. So I'm still going to open it up for discussion. Like I said, you can use the chat um, or if you want to just reflect internally, that is also great. Okay, so again, if you want to share, that would be wonderful. Um, I ask that when you do share, if you could just say what um, colony or chapter you're from. But I'm curious to see how many of our chapters and colonies actually already have a scholarship program in place, and then what does that scholarship or program entail? And again, feel free to chat or you can raise your hand and I'd be happy to take you off of mute. Okay, John, I took you off a of mute. Go ahead. And can you let us know what chapter or colony you're from? Hello, I am uh, the scholarship chair from the, the Louisville Chapter Triangle. Uh, the scholarship uh, program we have in place is a uh, mentor-mentee system. I'm not, I, I didn't know what you meant by a scholarship program, but it's just an academic plan to help people. Um, so what it is is that we have uh, mentors and mentees within our chapter. Mentors are typically older members or more academically stable members, while the mentees are people that tend to struggle or not sure what to do. Typically the lower members are the pledges uh, coming into the chapter. The way, uh, the way that works is that mentors meet uh, weekly with the mentees, talk about what, uh, like how their classes are going, what resources do they, do they need, um, and they kind of like direct them where they need to go. So like sometimes they may need help in a class and we direct them to a brother inside of the fraternity or to some uh, tutoring service uh, on campus to help them. Or sometimes it may be a more deeper emotional need and then we uh, direct them to that, like that brother who, who can provide that service or to a counseling on campus. It's just more like to make sure no one falls off the map. It's and to help keep people on track and know when they need to come for help. 
That's awesome, John. Thank you. Um, yeah, and he brought up a good point. I apologize. I'm so used to working on a college campus, and so the language that we always used was scholarship program, but when I say that, I mean academic program. Um, we are going to actually talk about one of the components that John just brought up, and that's um, this idea of mentorship, which is an amazing resource. I mean, you're utilizing the people that you already have in your chapter, um, and it, the peer-to-peer -peer mentorship actually proves to be more beneficial and more successful than other avenues, so that is really great that you guys do that. Would anybody else like to share what their chapter or colony is doing in regards to academics? Go ahead, Ben. You are now off of mute. I'm from the UK chapter. We have a pretty similar system, but we have different tiers for it. So when brothers fall just a little bit below our requirements, we put them on what's called probationary one. They're paired up with a mentor. They're required to meet once monthly to work out what's going wrong with them and how they can help. As well, meet with myself or someone else on the academic committee at the very beginning of each semester they're on this to work on what they struggled with last semester. Is this semester going to be an issue? What do they want us to do? What do we want to do for them and how it would work best? And then we'll have probationary two, where the mentors meet with them every other week. Then they are required to go to an extra study hours every week, and they also meet with our people. And then our lowest one, which is called academic delinquency, is where the brothers will meet with their mentor every single week, to work on their homework together. They're required to go to study sessions. They are put on social probation until the midterms, if they can get out of it and they get the most attention from the academic committee and what can be done for them. That's awesome. Thanks, Ben. Um, yeah, so the one thing that Ben brought up, which is one of the components that we're going to be talking about today, is this idea of a tiered system or um, like the different levels of support that you put in place dependent on where your members fall academically. Um, that is really going to be the bulk of what we talk about next week, but um, we will include it as one of the components with an academic program. Um, you know, if you have participated in the Better Man program or if you've taken a look at our pyramid accreditation program, you'll notice that it's requesting two things. It's requesting an academic program and then an academic improvement program. Um, and hopefully by the end of today, you'll be able to understand what the difference is between the two. And so today we're going to be talking about the generalized academic program. But overall, that's really great to hear that we're not just relying on study hours and study tables and that we have some different measures of accountability and support in place. So I would definitely invite you all um, to just reflect and think about what does your academic program look like. Um, and if you don't have one in place, then hopefully we can give you some good resources and tips to start your journey to create that. And I'll also add that um, I will have these resources listed for you online, and I'm happy to send a follow-up email after this so that you can use the template to get started or maybe edit what you already have in place. Okay, so what makes a really good scholarship or academic program? Uh, first and foremost, it needs to be something that finds the balance of reasonable expectations and still providing a level of challenge to members. So I always talk about this balance between challenge and support. You want to make sure that you are supporting your members but still adding enough challenge in there for them to reach their goals. Um, but you want to make sure that you don't challenge too much because that's when we see um, individuals start to shut down. So now in order for you to find that balance, the academic program or plan needs to be something that is made available and known to all members so that they can support it, comply with it, and provide feedback. Um, a lot of times chapters may have an academic program that just sits in a binder and is passed down from one academic chair to the next. And maybe a member will learn about it only if they're on academic probation. But it's important that you have regular discussions with all of your members so that you can take a more proactive approach um, with your academics. Another quality of a good academic program is that it's well thought out, it's flexible, it's cared for, and it's creative. Even if your chapter or colony has an average GPA of a 3.5, that doesn't give anybody the reason to kind of not make academics a priority. We need to make sure that this is something that we are talking about and focusing on um, every single day. So a good academic program offers support, it offers learning opportunities, it offers encouragement, 
recognition, standards, and accountability. And so towards the end of this program, I'm going to actually give you a sample academic program, and you will see that it includes all of these different components in it. And then finally, a good academic program is something that is always changing and always followed through. So um, I would say that while you definitely want to be transparent and have all of your members on the same page, it's important for people to know that an academic program is a living and breathing document uh, because Chapter culture changes, new members come in, um, there may be different scenarios that happen with your academic course load or, or whatever it may be, and so you need to be flexible to change your goals and adjust based on where you're at as an organization. So having an academic program that hits all of the qualities that I just mentioned is extremely important, but you want to make sure that your efforts are not unrealistic. Scheduling 10 academic workshops in a semester, requiring every member to meet with a tutor five hours a week, and expecting everyone to get a 4.0 is probably a little far-fetched. Um, you want to make sure that your program is attainable, but something you still feel proud about when it's accomplished. So while, yes, it would be great if all of our members had 4.0s, it just probably isn't too realistic, especially um, in your field of studies. So use your chapters or your community's academic history to set GPA goals or requirements. Make it something you know that people can achieve with hard work. So if I always say a good measure is setting your goal as an average chapter GPA to either be higher than the all Greek average GPA, the all IFC average GPA, um, or even the all campus. You definitely never want to be lower than the all campus average because we're saying that as members of fraternities that we are committing to being better. Another thing that I would encourage you all to look at is the pyramid accreditation program because it very clearly lays out expectations of what we have of our chapters and colonies as far as minimum GPA. So make sure that your goals are never less than that. While you definitely want to host academic workshops for your chapter members, um, 10 a semester in the midst of everything else you have going on will just annoy people. So work with the rest of your executive board to plan out what and when programs would make sense and then take a step further and try incorporating them into chapter meetings so it just isn't an extra thing that your members need to attend. So this is where I'd say for our academic chairs that are on this webinar that your job goes beyond just creating an academic plan and checking people's grades out. You should be providing members with resources and tips and uh, membership development opportunities throughout the year. So whether that's just like a helpful study tip during your report during the meeting or maybe bringing in um, a speaker quickly to talk about updates with career services or internship opportunities, um, you just want to make sure that academics is a, a focus, um, whether it's small or big, every single week. So setting requirements and expectations that are the exact same for every single member just won't work. You have to consider that everyone learns differently, has different things on their plate, like family issues or involvement in other organizations, and you have to realize that people have different needs. So yes, this is a huge commitment and takes a lot of time, but you will see uh, success in your chapter and in your chapter members if you're working individually with your different members. And, and this will really play true to when we start talking about improvement plans next week. Um, but you don't just want to lay like a, a blanket, this is what you have to do if you fall below a, a 2.5. You need to have conversations with them and see with what they're struggling with because they might need different support um, than someone else. The guy with a 4.0 that's on your executive board and in two other student organizations with a campus job should probably not be meeting with a tutor of the same amount as a first-year student has a 2.0. So this doesn't even go for different GPAs. Um, you have to think about where people are at in their lives, too. So your senior, um, your first semester senior who might be struggling may need different support or different measures of accountability than your first semester freshman who is clearly going through maybe some transitional issues with adjusting to the college and fraternity life. So all things you need to think about, sometimes it's beyond you as a college student, and that's when you can partner with um, campus resources to kind of assist you in creating a plan. Okay, so where do we even begin when we're creating or revamping our academic program? 
The first step is to do a SWOT analysis of, of your chapter's academics. So really looking into what are your strengths, what are your weaknesses, your opportunities and threats um, as a chapter as it's related to academics. So then you're going to use that information to establish goals for the chapter. As the academic chair, you want to make sure that you do this yourself and then bring it to the chapter. Or this could be something that you guys work on in a chapter meeting or at a retreat. But you want to make sure everybody is involved in the goal setting process. Um, because it just like in any goals that you set as a chapter, if one person or just a couple people are directing the vision um, and you don't have everybody on board, you're not going to be successful. So as you think through your SWOT analysis, you're going to want to use your strengths as something you showcase and highlight. So maybe you have members doing some really great things, recognize them for it, hold an academic banquet at the end of the year, provide scholarships, and publicize it to the community. So this analysis isn't just going to assist you in um, creating your program. It's also going to help you identify the things that you are already doing and what you can highlight in, in different arenas. So maybe one of your weaknesses is member support when they are struggling. Create a piece in your program where you can use campus resources for struggling members. So basically, each area that you identify can be transformed into a different piece of your program. And you'll see that a little bit more as I actually give you the sample program. Um, it's important that when creating an academic program or making changes to your already existing program, that you're extremely transparent with your chapter members. And you're going to hear me say this a lot. Um, you want to make sure that it's a policy external of your bylaws and constitution, or that it's something that you can amend into your constitution so that all members have a say and vote on it. I know that each chapter and colony may have a different process in place, um, so if, if it's not something that you would vote on, I just want to make sure that everybody has a hand in the discussion and that it's something that everybody's on the same page with. Either way, they need to know about the program and they should be consistently reminded of what the program entails. Okay, so obviously the title of this was Going Beyond Study Tables. So um, it, there may be some of you out there that rely on this heavily. It might be the only part of your program. Um, that's okay because unfortunately that's the culture of the fraternity and sorority experience. Um, it's just the easiest way to do it. And then we think that, you know, obviously if you're not getting a 3.0 or higher, it's because you're not studying and that's not always the case. So I just want to talk through this study tables piece for a second. Um, so let's be real, study hours um, may work once in a blue moon, um, and they may actually, if you create a study table or if you have a, a library or study hall in your house, maybe your members are getting work done there. But I would probably guess that there are some situations, especially when you're with all of your brothers, um, there may be a little bit more socializing that happens or we get focused on other things on the internet. Um, and you just have to consider that some people study differently. Um, I know that anything that you read says that you shouldn't study where you sleep, but I actually was more successful studying in my dorm room, whether it was like in the comfort of my bed or at my desk. And I was not uh, disciplined enough to study with my sorority sisters. I immediately started like getting on the internet and just talking with them. Um, so you have to consider that people learn and study differently. Um, you also need to think that like today our students are coming in with different um, abilities. And so say if one of your members has ADD, he may need a private cubicle. Um, this is not a, a negative. I, I think it's, it's just a realistic matter that everybody comes in with different things that they struggle with. And, and so you shouldn't create a bias to think that everybody um, needs the same support and same resources. We want to be flexible with our members and allow them to do whatever is going to help them to be successful. But you won't know that unless you engage in some dialogue and conversations with them. Uh, more than likely, academic programs we're currently doing may be a little bit lazy or beneficial or helpful to everyone. So again, that's where that SWOT analysis really comes into play and allowing your members to be a part of that because there may be different perspectives of what you're doing academically from different members that you didn't think of. Um, so maybe they feel like they're struggling because you just have too many meetings going on. There's just too much fraternity stuff and they're not feeling like they have the time to commit to their course load. And so that's something you really need to evaluate as a chapter um, in moving forward. So again, conversations are key. 
Okay, so let's actually start talking about creating a plan. So um, you want to create a plan for individual members. So if you have a small chapter or feel motivated, you could work with each member and create a plan that's specific to them. Um, so like I said, this is where it's going to take a lot of work and effort that you're creating individualized programs for each of your members. Um, I know at one point my undergraduate experience and my sorority, we actually were pretty small. Um, and so we did have the feasibility to meet one-on-one -on -one with each with, with each woman and see, you know, what are her goals, what are the things she struggles with, what would be reasonable for her to complete each week as far as it um, pertains to academics. And so that worked for us. But if you are a chapter of 40 to 80, that's going to be a little difficult. So you need to figure out what you can handle. I would say that um, it's always wise to maybe have an academic committee, um, and those are going to be people that are really passionate about getting good grades and academics and they're committed to the success of your fraternity academically. So a committee can always help you kind of delegate that work out. So one of the things that we had talked about um, that I think it was Ben that maybe brought up um, about the tiers for what to do when members fall into certain categories. A tier program is an amazing um, resource and way to structure your academic program because each tier should receive different support, has different goals to hit, and is required to accomplish different things. So, and like I said, we're going to go over this a lot more next week, but I always um, like to break it down even before they start entering into like your trouble zone for academics. So I think that there should be a tier for members that get a 4.0 to a 3.5 and then 3.4 to 3.0. 2.9 to 2.5, so on and so forth, because you want to make sure that academics is a proactive approach and not just reactive. Um, obviously, those men that are falling in a 4.0 to 3.5, they're not going to be required to do as much as the person that's in the 2.4 to 2.0. So really thinking about how you can kind of break down your tiers, and I would do that based on where your members currently fall academically. Um, make sure you're always including individuals with a high GPA, so everything I just said, um, you want to make sure that you are proactive. Um, and, that, and that way, too, I mean, we're not just looking at their semester GPA, or I'm sorry, their cumulative GPA, you're looking at their semester, too. So if Frankie Fraternity is always getting 3.8s every semester, and then one semester they get a 2.5, I think it's important to have a conversation with them about what happened um, so that you can support them and assist them in whatever they need. Um, so you want to take your program externally. And so what I mean by that is, are there campus resources that you could partner with? Are there um, tutors on campus? Do you have an academic support? program because again this shouldn't just be all in the responsibility of you as the academic chair or your academic committee. Um, if you think that they're good partnerships on campus then I would definitely encourage you to do that. And then finally which I've seen from working with both fraternities and sororities, fraternities aren't always as good at this part but making your program fun. Sororities it just kind of comes inherently easy to create um, like a, a, we would always do a skippy jar that we would pass around, which was a peanut butter jar. And if you skipped class, um, then you had to put a dollar in the jar and um, we would do like A's and B charts. So I'm not saying you need to do all that fluffy stuff, but I think that adding some fun or, or healthy competition could be really great and motivate your members. So whether that's like a, a wall of fame or brother of the week. Um, I've worked with some chapters that have done like a fantasy football type structure for how they track their grades. Um, so you just want to make the program fun and exciting for people to care about. Okay, so this is a screenshot of just a, a made up program that I created because obviously we don't have an Indiana chapter. Um, and it breaks down the different areas that I think are important for an academic program. And like I said, I will post this um, on our website, and then I'm happy to send it to you via email as well. Um, I'm not going to read this, but I'm just going to go over the different areas. So um, in this program, we first talk about the academic committee. And this highlights who 
um, who is eligible to be on the academic committee and what they're responsible for. Because again, you want to be transparent. You want your members to know who's there to support them. I also include a piece in here about recruitment. So this talks about how the chapter is utilizing academics in the recruitment process. So um, what their standard is for offering a bid, um, maybe like how they're marketing their academics. This just kind of lays it all out for you. Next, I talk about the continuous commitment. So this is the stuff that we're doing on a day-to-day -day basis to support um, the academic success of our members. So the academic chairman is committed to securing a copy of semester grades by the director of fraternity and sorority life and creating grade reports that track a four-year span. Um, they are committed to providing academic dates and announcements at weekly meetings, including last day to drop a class, when to declare um, different statuses, registration dates. So these are just like taking the program a little bit further and really highlighting what the committee or the chairman is committed to, to supporting academics for each member. Um, I talk about motivational posters and an academic bulletin board will be posted in the study room at the chapter facility. Um, and then a Google form will be created listing the schedules of members for each semester. Um, and this will allow members to reach out to brothers for assistance and tutoring should they need it. So again, this is not only just to show people what you're doing, but you're holding yourselves accountable to making sure that these are things that you're putting in place. The next piece is the academic workshops, which we'll talk about in two weeks, but it's just the different topics that um, we're you know, interested in offering to our members and should it be something that they that they want or are interested in, these are the programs that we can offer to them. So again, so far we've talked about um, the committee, offering it in recruitment, uh, the continuous commitment, and the workshop. So again, there's a lot more here than just this is what happens when a person is struggling academically. This is the fully encompassing approach to academics. Um, standards and support, so I don't have a lot of detail here because, again, this is that will be the primary focus of our webinar next week, but this just highlights the different levels that our members can fall into, um, and then we'll talk about next week what happens when you fall into those levels. Recognition, so this is some of the opportunities to make the academic program fun. Members will be encouraged to record A's and B's that they receive on projects and exams, and then these add up to points, and the person at the end of the semester with the most points gets a sweatshirt and a $50 Visa gift card. Um, a skip jar will be passed around at each meeting, wall of fame. Um, each week we'll have a scholar of the week, and they get a $5 Starbucks gift card. Um, so as you can see, there's a ton of different incentives that we put in place. This obviously needs to be something that's budgeted into your chapter at the beginning of the semester. And these are things that you can also um, include in CEF requests. So if you have a chapter endowment fund, you're able to pull 5% um, each year for approved academic and educational opportunities. So if you create a plan and you have these programs in place, I would definitely encourage you to send that application over to TEF because you could potentially get money that would fund scholarships and programs like this. Next, obviously it's really important to highlight what we're doing academically for our new members. Um, so what programs are you offering them? They need to be set up on an academic program right away. Um, how is the academic chair supporting them? Um, and then also offering fun little incentives for them too. Um, so again, highlighting a different area of our academic focus. And then finally, assessment. It's important to, at the end of each semester or academic year, assessing how you're doing, what's working, what's not working, how do your members feel, um, because like I said, your academic program should be a living and breathing document that you can revise and edit each year. So that was a lot. I know I talk really fast. Um, but hopefully you have a better idea now that the academic program is more about everything that you're doing in your chapter to support academics. Um, so again, that includes recognition, incentives, standards, um, accountability, it, everything, programming, it includes everything. Um, next week, we're going to focus solely on the accountability and standards piece and, and how do you support them through that. Um, so with that, I want to open it up and ask if there are any questions um, or concerns or comments. 
So again, you can raise your little hand icon if you have something to say or ask. All right, so seeing none. Um, again, I would encourage you to um, definitely look at the Pyramid Accreditation Program, which is on triangle.org's website, and go straight to the academic piece so that you can make sure that your chapter or colony is meeting the minimum requirements. And for those of you who aren't familiar with the accreditation program, we've set it up into four different tiers. So there's the meeting minimum expectations, um, then there's the next level, and then there's exceeding expectations, and so you should look through each tier and see where you're at as a chapter currently, and can you set your sights a little higher and try to reach the top tier, um, and that, that sets you up for award. So use that as a, as a frame of reference for the goals that you should be setting for your chapter, the things that you should be putting in, into place for your members. Um, I think that's a good starting point. I would also encourage you to do a quick little analysis of where you're at currently with your academics. Um, I would look at all of your members GPAs and and if you have historical data see what the trends are. Are there semesters that you struggle more than others? Um, and then obviously myself and our chapter development team here at headquarters is always available to assist you and help you create a plan of action. Um, obviously we're more than willing to come to your campus and and do a specific program that's geared just towards you guys, um, but we definitely want to see all of our groups succeeding academically. So if it's something you're struggling with, let us know and we're definitely happy to help. So with that, um, I'm going to conclude our presentation today. Like I said, I will follow up with um, resources so that you can have in case this is something that you want to work on. And I also encourage you all to attend next week. So it's next Thursday, 3 p.m. Central, or not Central, sorry, 3 p.m. Eastern. And we will be discussing specifically the improvement plan and the different um, tiers for, you know, if they're struggling academically. Um, my email is ariel at triangle.org. So if you have any follow-up questions after this, please feel free to contact me. So thank you so much for attending session two of Academic U. And I hope you all have a wonderful rest of your day.